you've ever been frustrated by anything involving a Floyd Rose, I guarantee the next 15 minutes will be well worth every second of your time. Before I turn the camera on today, I removed the clamps from the locking nuts here. I also removed the truss rod cover and uh, the piece here, I'll call it the string tree. That's essentially the job it does is to pull the strings down after they've exited the nut. I also adjusted the fine tuners to about 50% of the way down and then tuned the guitar to pitch. Let's take a look at the tools and apparatus we're gonna use. First is about an inch thick block of just foam. I use it to keep the butt end of the guitar up off the workbench because we're going to be sticking a trim block in the back of it to keep the trim level and to keep it blocked out the entire time. If you don't have trim blocks, if you haven't bought those, uh, you can use a 9-volt battery. You can wrap it in tape and make it thicker. Uh, you can also use a deck of cards or a stack of business cards, just something that you can change the thickness of. That's the key. Some wire cutters here for the strings. We've got a capo so we can set the neck relief. I've got a couple string winders out. This is the kind you can stick in a drill if you want to. This is the kind I prefer because they just don't make noise. A couple truss rod wrenches out here, one that I made myself. I just took a socket, filed the top of it, drilled a hole in it, and then used an Allen wrench. Um, this is just a cheapo from Amazon and it works really, really well. And then this is an expensive one from Stu Mac that on this guitar just flat out won't work. I've got a Floyd Rose intonation tool. This is a new thing from Skyscraper Guitars. I just got done with the design and the first run of these here in December. I am extremely happy with this. If you don't have one of those, a lot of people out there have uh, the key. This was the de facto Floyd Rose intonation tool and everyone used it. I think a lot of people cuss when they use these. This one, the, uh, the knob is stripped out and I've done that to a handful of these, which is why I designed the tool that I did uh, because I was very frustrated. There's no alternative for this tool out there, so I decided to make one. A couple feeler gauges, they're, they're cheap. They're like eight or 10 bucks at the auto parts store. And I take out my favorites, put tape on them and write the numbers on them so I don't have to go searching through. I've got my string height and fret rocker. And uh, this is obviously skyscraper guitars as well. You don't have to have this kind. Um, I wanted to make a nice fret rocker that I knew was ground on the edges. And I thought, you know what, while we're at it, let's add a string height gauge to it just for a little more value. This is the Stu Mac version of the string height gauge, not a fret rocker. Um, wonderful, wonderful tool. This is, this is made very, very well. This is the cheap kind that you can get on Amazon for just a few bucks. These are terrible. Don't waste your money on these. The measurements are inaccurate. The lines aren't spaced evenly. A fresh set of strings, a microfiber towel, a neck rest. You can use foam. You can use rolled up newspaper and magazines. It doesn't really matter. We're not filing frets today. So uh, it, can, it can be whatever you want it to be. I like mine to have holes drilled in it so that my screwdrivers don't wind up all over the bench and wind up scratching the guitar I'm working on. I've got a couple Allen keys here too for all of the Floyd Rose work. Next, we wanna grab our capo, put it on here. We're gonna start with 12 thousandths on the neck relief. We'll check it at the ninth and the seventh fret and see if we can get it sweet there. And if we can't, without any fret buzz, we'll go for 14. With the capo on, we'll hold it at the 24th fret and just see if we get any movement there. And we absolutely don't. We've got quite a bit more neck relief and I haven't adjusted this truss rod since we moved. I'm in a way drier climate here in Colorado and that's probably why. So we're gonna tighten up the truss rod just a little bit. I always like to illustrate how, how little tension it takes by pushing down on the headstock here. Watch this shadow and that string, and I'm just barely putting any pressure on that, but that tells you what the truss rod adjustment's gonna do. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to affect that string height. I always loosen these just to see if the truss rod works, and uh, this one hasn't been adjusted in a while, so we'll kinda go down and then tighten her back here because we do need just a little bit more than where we started. Sometimes you can actually help by pushing down just a tick on the headstock. Uh, this is the ninth fret here, and you can see the gap in the shadow. Sometimes that helps, and sometimes the actual reflection 
of the string on the feeler gauge helps you know whether or not you've got it. That we've still got a little gap and we've got gap at the seventh fret as well. Now before anybody freaks out about this being done not in the playing position, we are roughing this in so we're getting it as close as we can to the spec I want before we go forward. And you can do this at the 24th, you can do it at the 20th, uh, however you want to do it. But that's getting pretty sweet right there. A uh, little bit more. Let's see where we're at. Ooh, that's close. We're about right at 14. So let's close the gap a little bit more and see if we can get it perfect. So we're rubbing on the 14. And the 12 is sliding in there. Really nice. We'll check it a final time in playing position after we get new strings on and everything else is adjusted. I hope everybody can see this, but the back of the bridge is just a little bit lower than the front. So that means the springs on the bottom of this guitar are just a tick too tight. So to set up the Floyd, the first thing I'm going to do is back these two screws off. And we're just going to do like one full turn. So there's a quarter, there's a half, three quarters and one, and I get the question, and we're going to do both of them the same. I get the question all the time that if you back these off and screw them in, don't you wear out the threads in the body of your guitar? I go through this setup about once a year on this guitar just to keep it playing nice. I've had this guitar for well over 20 years and never had a problem. If you just back them out a couple turns, it's not going to snap them off. It's not going to wear anything out. So, um, you know, that's my experience. And I know a lot of people will cuss and say these springs need to be straight and whatever else. Uh, I've been running this setup since I've had this guitar and uh, I'm happy with it. If you bring me your guitar and you want me to work on it, I'll put them straight for you unless you ask me to do it this way. Okay, with the strings backed off here, we're going to take a peek at the bridge and I hope the camera can keep up here, but the bridge should be leaned slightly forward. If it's not, you can loosen up your springs a little bit more. And this is where I use, these are my trim blocks that I make. They're just a graduated block. There's four different sizes. This is the biggest one. It's three quarters to five eighths. And then they go down from there. So they get kind of skinnier down to, uh, this one's quarter by three eighths. So you can see the difference in those sizes of blocks there. So the idea with these is you put them in the back here between the sustain block and the body of the guitar and you push them in far enough that since the trim was leaned a little forward you push it in and you're pushing on that sustain block until the trim gets set back level and then it will sit level until we are done working on this guitar and with that sticking out that's why I have the rubber block there you can set it here without fear that it'll uh, you know want to push up any further check in string height with this guy at the 12th fret and you can just see that line under there and that's that's what we're looking for sorry about the dirt on my fret rocker there I've got 564's on the bass side 564's on the treble side I like to play with a little higher string action on the treble strings than what most of the factory settings will tell you because uh, I've got, I guess I'd call them thick fingers, I don't know, but I like the string to hit more in the middle of my finger when I'm bending strings. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but when you have them too low, it wants to hit on the fleshy part of your finger instead of the end of your finger, and I don't like that as much, so I tend to have my treble strings a little bit higher and I was just checking with the Stu Mac and we're getting the exact same measurements so we are dead on there sharp on the A 
sharp on the D. Just a tick sharp on the D. Get on there. Just a tick sharp on the E. This is where we start to use our new intonation tool here. And I've got it stretched out just enough for the A here. Basically, the reason I adjust these to 50% is there's a relief in here that allows this fine tuner to work. And it doesn't allow the fine tuner to come all the way to the top. And it's just a limitation of the design of the tool. But if you have it at 50%, it fits pretty comfortably in there. So uh, the same Allen wrench that tightens and loosens this screw works on the back of this tool. And I do include that Allen wrench because I know everybody out there in YouTube land has misplaced the Allen wrench uh, for this guy. We all have the, the big one for changing strings and getting rid of the locking nut, but everybody tends to lose this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach, reach in. You got to move this string just a little bit here, loosen that guy up. And then we're going to, this will work under string tension, which I don't believe the key will. Um, so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. So we're going to twist it one, two, and then I'm going to tighten it down and we're going to tune it back to pitch and see if we're intonated properly. We're going to leave it in place though for now. This is the Peterson. So we're locked up on the A there. That's the natural open note. The harmonic is locked up and then the fretted note is just, I mean, just a shade sharp. So here we go. We're down on the A again. We're just going to loosen that a little bit. Then we're going to pull this guy, I'm going to say about a quarter of a turn tighter. Then we're going to lock this back up, tune it to pitch and see what we got. There's the open fundamental, the harmonic, and the fretted note. And we're locked up. I'm going to go through the balance of the strings and get them intonated. So now we can take this guy off. We'll go through, fine tune everything. I'll let you guys watch the Peterson as we run through high E, B string. G, D, A and E. So we are locked in, roughed in. Uh, I forgot to point out uh, the blocks in here, but if you were going to use playing cards or something, you just stack up enough, you know, however you want to do it to fit in there. If you're going to use a battery, same thing. You just put electrical tape around it or something and get it in there. When, we're, when we take the strings off, um, this will come out. So we'll just pull it out now. We'll remember where we had it. I don't like to just cut strings off. It's kind of like feel like it's a little bit, you know, akin to running your car into a wall. You can do it and you'll probably be all right, but it's maybe not a good idea. This is always a great time to come in and get the dust and grime off the guitar. I don't do this every week, obviously. I do it eh, once, sometimes twice a year, just to keep my guitar playing and looking nice. And if anybody's coming over, you know, sometimes I like to <laughs> make them look nice. I don't keep any of my guitars in their case, and I know that's probably a bad habit, but I like to just be able to come downstairs and play and not fumble through a bunch of cases. And a lot of times if I'm playing, I will go through two or three of my guitars in the same session because I keep my Strat tuned down to E flat. I always have this one in E and I like to play my acoustic once in a while as well. Actually, I shouldn't say once in a while, all the time. It keeps your fingers strong. So, um, you know, to each their own. If you keep your guitar in a case, you probably don't have nearly as much dust. 
This guitar is, I believe, from 1988 or 89, so it's from the 80s. And always had great luck. I've never had any complaints, so I do things the way I do them. And you're welcome to do them the way you do them. And I think it's all good. I think there's about a million ways to take care of a guitar. And uh, the way I do it is one of those million. So there's no magical formula here. I just like to cut these off at the back of the saddle. You don't have to worry about wraps around the post or anything like that because uh, you don't, on a Floyd Rose, you don't rely on those string wraps to pull the, the brake angle down, is how I would say it. So you just cut them long enough to get in there. You can actually cut it shorter than what I just did. Sometimes when you lean the bridge up, you know, you get a little bonus there. And you do use your wang bar to bring these forward. Now to put this thing back on, essentially you just kind of lift him up, get it across the strings there, and then I'd take that screw completely out, which I know some people probably will have issue with that. Some people have issues with pretty much everything. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you do it their way, somebody else will have issues. So anyway, this is how I do it. So we can see here that the string is above the back of the nut. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that down so the string is in contact with the back of the nut there. If you attempt to tune up your guitar at this point without blocking the tremolo on the back side, you will enter the never-ending seesaw of the Floyd Rose, and that's why a lot of people hate the Floyd Rose. So here's the example of how this just works against you. Here's my A, then the D, there's a D, now let's listen to the A again. The A is now a G sharp, so it dropped half a step. And it goes like that, you go back and forth and back and forth. So we're gonna block the back of the trim, we're gonna get it level, and then we'll get everything tuned up in one shot, it'll be sweet. Okay, we've got the block in there now. I never show stretching on camera. We'll stretch all the strings just so you can see that I actually do it. Just take the fine tuners, turn them all the way out, and then I turn them in eh, just a little bit. I find that the strings tend to go flat over time and you need to bring them up. It's a pretty rare day uh, when you have to, have to back these things out. So then I'll put on our locks at the end of the nut and we'll be done with this one. And we're taking a look, this is the 12 thousandths. Eh, sometimes we check it at the twelfth too, but there at the ninth, we're just perfect. Just perfect. We'll check for string buzz on all the notes. Those little farts you hear in there are me. That is playing super sweet. We bit out of tune. We need to get it back in tune here real quick, and then we'll adjust the springs at the back. This last part is the fun part, and essentially what you want to do is go quarter turns. I'm going to do a half here just because I think we're going to need it. There's a half until this block falls out, and you can kind of see when it's loosening up. So we'll go quarter, half, if you remember when we started this thing wasn't set up poorly it's real loose now so probably another quarter and quarter let's see yep there it is this this has got a ridge inside of here it doesn't like to fall all the time but usually they'll just fall out let's make sure it's still in tune perfectly in tune there we'll make sure on the peterson but uh, that is it 
for the Floyd Rose full setup, including intonation. There you have it, how to set up your Floyd Rose guitar using a few tools you might already have around the house and maybe a few tools that you don't have. I do have this entire session captured in an ebook that's available on my website, skyscraperguitars.com. There is a link in the description below. While you're there, take a look around. I hope you see something that you like. And in the meantime, rock on. <laughs>